Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Bia here with a new video of Fertile Press. So as you can see from the obscene amount of inks that I have on my desk, we are doing a mega swatch sheet of Ferris Wheel Press. The reason for this is that I used to do little swatch sheets whenever I got the new collection and with all the moving I kind of lost most of them. So sometimes I just want to see how a color looks and I don't have it swatched. I either have to go see on a drawing and that sometimes is mixed with other colors, so it's not a completely accurate representation of that color. And also I thought it would look really, really nice. <laughs> Starting with the first row, I pretty much went to their website and I just collected, uh, I think they have like a little swatch, a little cards with their names, and I just kind of arranged them on Photoshop the inks and then in rainbow order and then I tried to do that in real life. So the first row is pretty much your yellows and reds. I was very inconsistent with showing you the name of the inks. Uh, it was a mess. But I'll list all of the colors, how they are laid out on the comment pen down below. So if you see a color that you like, you can always check out that comment and cross reference to see which color that it is. <laughs> This, these swatches are very uneven because I'm me and I'm not great at doing very precise things. So I kind of did it by hand, just with the tape. So not all of them are that equal in size, but it's fine. <laughs> the second row was pretty much pinks to purples. And I just, I'm really, I'm really happy to have done this. Plus, besides looking really, really cool, it was a really fun project. Like just a night that I was getting a bit overwhelmed with drawing and everything else. I just needed something that wasn't like too taxing on my head. So while I was doing this, I was actually watching the final episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which is very, very sad that it's over. Let me know if you, if you're a Shaniac or a Borgara. <laughs> I love Shane. I really like it. Okay, so third row is blues to sort of like teals. Ferris Wheel Press has some gorgeous teals, are my favorite so far. A quick note that I don't really have all the colors uh, from their like normal with air quotation collection. I'm actually missing one, which is called Peppermint Drop, which is like a very deep green, like forest green. I personally am not sad that I don't have it. I don't think I'd really use that color, but just a disclaimer that I don't have all the colors. You're going to see in the end that I don't have enough to fill the whole spaces. And if I had that color, it would look beautiful and complete. But since I don't have it, it looks like I missed space. <laughs> it's quite annoying, but it happens. They have a tons of other colors that are like either limited edition or just other collections that the sponsored artists don't really get. Yeah, by the way, uh, I'm a sponsored artist from Ferris Wheel Press. That's why I have so many inks. They don't pay me for making any videos or anything else. I just get the collections that they come out with from time to time, just to try it out with you guys. So I'm not being paid for anything and I just really enjoy their inks. Here I'm doing a fantastic job at framing. Way to go, Bia, you are a fantastic YouTuber. <laughs> but I fix it, still not great, but better. And the last row goes to greens, to more earthy colors, to finally gray. I had the most difficulty arranging this row. I was just not knowing where to put it. And then of course I mixed up two colors, which really annoyed me. Uh, so these two were supposed to be swapped. Uh, I believe it was Peter Moss and uh, I don't remember the name. I'll put it in the screen <laughs> because they were just swatched in their boxes. So I, that really annoyed me, but oh well, it's fine. 
I actually had to start over this once. I forgot to mention that this is the Imagine Canson paper in 270 GSM, I believe. I went out and I got just like smooth paper. I wanted it to be big, so, uh, but also smooth because this ink really shines in smoother paper. Uh, I initially wanted to get Bristol paper, but it was completely sold out where I'm was able to and I didn't felt like ordering it online so this was the best next option but if I was going to do this again I would definitely use Bristol paper or board because it looks so so nice in like smooth smooth paper it's really nice quick note before I forget you see me dip in ink the ink twice because the first time it has lots of pigments and then I water it down with water just to see how it reacts with water since I use these inks very watered down I really enjoy looking at the swatch, how it reacts with water. That's why I kind of also did them longer so you can see just more action with separation and stuff like that. I think it looks really, really cool. The first one that I did was more square-ish and it doesn't allow for much fun to happen. So I think it works a lot. And I, of course I got all messy because it's me again. I'm just super messy. Now you can enjoy some tape removal. Even though I used a heat gun, I tear up a lot of paper in this part, unfortunately, but it could be worse, so enjoy. <laughs> Then it was all dry and it was time to do all the names of the inks. To be completely honest, my handwriting is not great. It's really, really bad. Uh, and in the beginning, I really wanted this to be so ornate. I wanted to do it like a frame in gold, all that stuff. But then I remembered that I'm not good at it. And so I just scrapped that idea. 
and I just did three letters to represent the names of the inks. If I had better handwriting, I would do the name and it would look pretty and glorious and kind of vintagey. But alas, I don't possess that skill of pretty handwriting. It's pretty bad. Most of the times I don't understand it myself, so nah, <laughs> would not be a good idea. But I think this turned out so, so cool. The colors just behaved so beautifully in this paper. It still annoys me that I have that little, little rectangle missing, so it's quite annoying. I thought of repeating a color just to fill that out. But I, I, uh, it would make sense just to be fully symmetrical, but it's fine, it works. If I ever get another color, I just pop it in there if it makes sense, <laughs> if it's darker. <laughs> if Ferris Wheel Press ever comes out with a black, that's where it's going to go. <laughs> with that, this video is done. This was a very simple project, but honestly one that I had lots of fun doing and I totally recommend creating just like huge swatch sheets of your colors because they look really, really nice. I kind of want to frame this and put it up in my little space workspace because one, it's a great way to reference colors and two, it looks really nice. So I'll definitely do that in the future. I just need to invest in a kind of okay frame. Just It needs to be A3, so they were kind of expensive. With that, thank you so much for being here and for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like any Ferris wheel press ink, remember you can always use my code BABISHKUART to support me in my creative journey and save up some money in the meantime. But yeah, if you like any color, just reference it down below. Thank you again so much for being here and for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment down below which of these colors do you enjoy the most? And if you have any colors of Ferris wheel press, which ones? Thank you so much for watching and for being here. You guys have been amazing. I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.